Yo, it's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the studio. I probably sound better. I'm trying out some new mics. We'll see. How does, how does it sound? Let me know in the comment section down below. But you guys saw the thumbnail. You guys know what this video is about. It's the Pioneer Rev 7. Let's get it. This right here. This is the Pioneer DDJ Rev 7. I'm also pretty sure this is like one of only like 10 in the United States right now. All right, so I had to take a pause for a second because shout out at DJ Rick Webb. Follow me on Instagram at DJ Rick Webb. I'm live streaming this unboxing right now. So you guys are watching this later on, but what up live stream? Let's get into it. Pioneer DDJ Rev 7. Take another shot at that right there. Look at that. Pioneer. DDJ Rev 7, one of the first units in America. Now, let's figure out how you actually unbox this. We got some little pull tabs over here, looks like. I like this. This is definitely a lot more fancy of an unboxing, especially with that white box. Ooh, doggy, we're in the box. Let's see, what do we get in the box? We do have some needle stickers, so stickers for your um, needles on the actual motorized platters. A power brick, I did not know that. I did a lot of prior research on this, and also I've looked at, um, I've, I've seen this in person. I was just out at Vegas, like I said, and I got to play with this thing in person, and um, I did not know it came with a power brick. Kind of a downer right there. I kind of wished it was IEC. USB cable, as always, can we just please, please, like, Manufacturers, Pioneer, USB Type-C, please. Everyone uses USB Type-C at this point. Let's get to the main piece de resistance. The controller. And we got packaging, packaging. Wow, this is smaller than I remember. I mean, like, literally, I just played with this thing in Vegas. Oh, she's a beauty. That S9 center mixer. This is what sold me on this controller. Like, literally, as soon as they announced it, I saw the, the center S9 mixer, which is, if you guys know, I'll pop up a picture right now, but I use the S9 with the Rain 12s in my custom furniture booth, and I love it. And every time I go to have to do a smaller event when I have to take the 1000 or I have to take my SZ, literally it, it irritates me because I don't, have my, my, I don't have my flips anymore, I don't have all my center pads anymore, and I have to like readjust my workflow to use that controller, which is it keeps me fresh being able to have to go back and forth, but man, this is awesome. All right, everyone, Rev 7 fully hooked up. We're gonna be powering it up for the first time. Ooh, look at that little, that's a cool little animation. I haven't seen this fired up before. It's glorious. Oh God, I forgot, I forgot how good these feel. They are very um, loose, which um, the Cleveland Terry hack should hopefully catch up and uh, fix that up. So the platters, um, they have like little plastic rings underneath them and you can replace them with a slip mat, which I probably will be doing because these are very, very loose. Make a little weird sound too. This is so freaking unreal to see the Pioneer made a controller like this. So right here is the Pioneer DDJ Rev 7. Like I said, I've already played with this before, so I've gone through a mess of everything. Um, take you through a quick walkthrough on the top here. Uh, obviously front and center. We have the motorized jog wheels, and Pioneer has a weird name for that. Not gonna say what it is, but it's motorized, vinylized jog wheels. So on top, you have what feels like a vinyl, a little bit, but around it is a jog wheel, which is very interesting. It's a jog wheel, but it's like a mini turntable. This is bigger, or at least I think, this feels bigger than the Rain 1. Marcellus, my DJ that works for me, has the Rain 1. This feels a lot bigger than his. We have our nice start and stop on the right sides. It's set up like a battle mixer, so up top you have your pitch. We have dials on either side to select your tracks. There's a load button below on either side to load your decks. In the center here, we basically have a S9 mixer. Pretty much the same layout. The only thing that I can note is these are plastic flip up and uh, your effects are split on either side and it's internal effects which i love i love internal effects the echo is pretty much the only thing i use on my s9 occasionally i'll use my flanger occasionally i'll use my brake but that's pretty much it we have low medium high master boof right in the center trim on either side with the filter on either side right beside them pretty much everything is in the standard spot for an s9 we have silent cue parameters we have our hot cue our roll our save loops our sampler below that we have pitch play splicer loop save flip and scratch bank over here we have our sampler volume 
And over here we have our standard headphone controls that you would find on the S9. We have our mix, master, Q, we have our level, and we have our little crossfader here for channel one, channel two. Literally exactly like an S9, I can't say that enough. Other than that, up here is our loop section. We have auto loop, we can half it, we can double it. In and out is on the shift function, active is on the shift function. Slip, sensor button, miss the sensor button. I had the sensor button on the SZ. Excited to have it back. Our key up and down. Our scratch bank is also over here and our hot cue is over here as well. Stop time for the actual spinner. So you can adjust how fast or how slow it stops. So it's more sudden like that or a very slow stop. Just a right there. 33, 45, that's pretty much it on the top of the decks. Let's go to the basically the back and the front. Now if I didn't say already, I don't actually know a lot about this controller. I do know I've used it. I know I love it. It's amazing. One more thing before I go down. The only thing that I don't like about this, and um, it's mostly because it's true vinyl turntables have this, but on my Rain uh, 12s, there's normally a lock for the pitch in the center here. For this, we don't have a lock. There's no lock. It's just free up and down on either side. You can adjust it up and down, um, but there is a, with the tempo range, you can adjust your range and there is a reset button. So if you get close to the center, you can just hit the reset. It'll go back to normal. It's not a big deal. I'm not complaining. I would love to have the lock, but nine times out of 10 when I'm mixing, it's not even in the center anyway. So I think it's just a mental thing for me that I'm used to being able to feel it. So I think I'll be able to get around it pretty easily, especially with being able to see the BPM right here on the screens. I didn't even really talk about it, but we have screens right here dead smack in the middle of the jog wheels where we can see both track A and track B on both sides right over here, which is extremely dope. Mag fader as well. What, what more do you want? So on the front of the controller here, we do have mic controls, not just for one mic, but two mics found on this controller. And we'll look at that on the back side here very shortly. We have a switch here for on, talk over, our level controls for mic one, mic two. The EQ is for both mics, it's not individual. We have a low and a high adjustment as well as an echo. Really cool to see an echo on the mics. I'm excited to start playing with that. In the center, again, kind of similar to what you would find on an S9 to some degree, a little bit different layout though. Uh, we have reverse on and off for both channel one and channel two. We have curve adjust for our faders up and down. And in the center, we have adjust for the cross fader so we can adjust the feeling, how light or heavy it is we can reverse the crossfader with a simple switch and we have curve adjustment as well so that it's very snappy or a loose fade on the crossover coming across from that we have our headphone jacks both quarter inch and 3.5 millimeter aux input style and then over to the right we have our aux input and we have a control for it we have offline or portable and our level for that as well. So on the back of the Rev 7 here starting on the left we have dual XLR inputs for our masters. We have RCA inputs for our master as well. Quarter inch booth outputs. Pioneer, can we just can we just do away with quarter inch and please go to RCA? Or just do XLR across the board, I would love it. This is pretty much the standard back panel that you're gonna see on most Pioneer controllers as I continue, but USB A and B for two laptop controllers that can come into this. We have our right and left RCA inputs for channel one and channel two, as well as our RCA aux input. Moving over to our mic section again, Pioneer, can we just do XLRs for everything, but mic two, we have a quarter inch. Mic one, we have an XLR with a quarter inch. And then we have our power on and off button. And then our power input for our power brick, because you know, we love power bricks and we totally don't miss IECs. All right guys, I think it's time to now go ahead and hook up the laptop and see what this bad boy can do. So before we hook up the controller, let's go ahead and apply my wonderful stickers so I can see where the heck my needle is. Ooh, that's so clean. Beautiful. All right, let's bring in the Windows, Windows, HP Spectra 15T. That is my go-to laptop. Where is my laptop stand? I have a laptop stand here too. Well, 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 if you cannot tell, it's the next day. No fault at all of the Rev 7, but um, let's just say my computer was not happy with new technology. One, my computer was like, hey, it's time to download and go to Windows 11. So it did that. And then on top of that, I needed to download the newest version of Serato because the current version I was on does not support the new Rev 7. So I had to go through hell and get all that thing figured out. But as soon as I got the new version of Serato, reinstalled the drivers on Windows 11, good to go. It's been rock solid. I've actually been messing around with this for about the last hour now. 
So I can give you guys some of my first impressions on it and obviously I didn't show any of it on camera because of, well, this good old thing called copyright reasons. So if I like, I have God's plan pulled up right here. That's about all I can play for you guys before it gets flagged. She said, do you love, love me? I tell her only. I do want to give you guys some first impressions I have of the Rev 7. Now, I played with this for about 10 minutes in Vegas and now I've had a solid hour playing with a full-fledged production unit and I gotta say similar complaints that uh, you guys have probably seen online from people about this these jog or these uh, vinylized motorized joggles whatever they call these slip mats are just way way too loose like it's just it's so hard because to like try and just do like a one-two in just literally just if all I wanted to do was literally a one-two in, it's so slip. Like it, it, it doesn't have enough grab. Like I either, I either over push the record on accident, or, or just it, it's just weird. It doesn't want to drop properly, um, or it, or my fingers are not used to this this sort of really loose feel. Uh, on my, my Rain Twelves have a definitely a lot more feel to them and also these are smaller so it is a learning curve for me to get used to but that's kind of my only complaint right now um i'm in love with this right here the basically the s9 or the s7 i guess center mixer here is freaking amazing it's got everything i wanted it does feel a little different with the plastic toggles compared to the metal ones on the s9 but everything is in the spots that i expect it to be in my headphones are here my faders are here, my cues are right here in the center. This is literally the same form factor. So like, it's not like squished together, it's not compact, it's nice, it's laid out properly. And honestly, DJing on this, it doesn't feel small, even though this thing is actually very small in comparison to like the SZ goes out to like here. And the 1000 is definitely smaller, the 1000 comes into about here. The 1000 is just definitely more cramped in the center space here, the 1000 SRT. This one, nice big two channel proper DJ mixer in the center and it's got a lot of space. On the sides here, these platters are actually pretty good size and um, can't complain. I, I like everything I'm working with. I've got used to not having my notch in the center of my tempo range, but yeah, first impressions, this thing is dope. And um, that's pretty much all I can say. This thing has definitely got a lot of potential to be one of the best DJ controllers on the market right now. And that's coming from someone that has an SZ, a 1000 SRT, Rain 12s, an S9, and now this. I love this thing. This thing's dope. I'm excited to, one, to use that at events, and two, to build out a case. That's right. You guys are about to see a 1000 SRT case build that I did for uh, my DJ Ralph that works for me on Fusion Sound and Lighting. We built out his whole entire 1000 SRT case with mics and everything built into it. And I'm planning to do the same thing for the Rev 7 right here. I'm going to be moving my SZ into the studio or my 1000, not entirely sure yet, but the Rev 7, I plan to be taking on the road with me for my go-to mobile controller. And I'm super excited about that because it's just gonna keep, when it comes to like my DJing, it's gonna keep it all the same. For the most part, this thing's gonna stay in the studio until I get that case because I'm not even entirely sure if they make cases for this thing yet, it's so new. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed to see the Rev 7. The Rev 7 is finally coming to people. Um, if you guys got pre-orders, I can definitely tell you right now, you are not going to be disappointed with this controller. The only thing is we are going to have to replace these. So first thing I'm gonna be doing literally tomorrow morning is looking for slip mats for this or I'm gonna purchase another pair of slip mats so that way I can cut them and get them in this so that I can get a normal feeling turntable again. Um, I still haven't figured out how you get this thing to go back in properly, like which way it goes in. All right, so for reference, there's a notch here. You put the notch right here. You gotta line the notch up, which is more easier said than done. All right, but anyways guys, this was a quick unboxings, first impression of the brand new Pioneer DDJ Rev 7. Uh, I don't normally do a lot of these videos anymore, but stay tuned, lots to come with this controller, especially out in the wild. I'm excited to start using this at events. We got a lot of events this year, so really excited for that. Um, but anyways guys, slap a like on this video, 
Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel to see all the new content. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the Rev 7. Have you seen it in person? Did you guys see it out at Max? Are you getting one? Let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, guys, my name is Dedrick Webb. Keep the record spinning. New content coming. Follow me on Instagram at Dedrick Webb. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.